Welcome to the Journey of Ruth podcast, where we encourage listeners to love Jesus, study his word, and reach others. I am excited to introduce you to my guests, Margie Galloway, Tracy Steele, and Jennifer Porras. Well, ladies, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having us. Thank you for inviting us. (laughs) Absolutely. One of our goals in doing the Entrust Conference was to have multi-generational women here, everywhere in this building. Um, That is what we need in discipleship, to have it be effective, is it must be multi-generational. And so these ladies are all connected by discipleship. Um, Once again, so just like uh, Jenna Lee invited herself, Tracy invited herself. I did. And... (laughs) I love women in Jesus and discipleship. That's right. She was like, man, I wish I could do a a panel or something. I wish you were doing a panel. That's what she said. And I was like, well, sounds like I am now. (laughs) And we really wanted something like this to happen. I was like, Tracy is the perfect person to do this. And so I said, Tracy, do you have someone that discipled you? And do you have someone that you've discipled that you might bring uh, and that would be willing to talk in front of people? And she said, I do. So, ladies, let's just start with you, Margie. We'll go down. Tell us your name and tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Margie Galloway, and uh, my husband and I have been in ministry for over 50 years. And one of the greatest things that God did for me was just to allow me to realize that I could be qualified to uh, encourage others. It was kind of a shock to me to to realize I was the older woman. Now, in First Peter, it talks about being an older woman and investing in the younger. More yes. seasoned. Yes. Well, anyway, I kind of thought I was still really young, but it was kind of worked out that that was an opportunity then for me to really uh, start investing in discipling. But you don't have to be old to disciple. I just want you to know that. So, um, and so I was, um, I was on staff at Scottsdale Bible Church. I was the minister to women. And um, I came there in 2004, and Tracy was the intern in the youth department. And in 2005, she became kind of over the women in the youth. She was, uh, became the director of, of the women. And I just felt very impressed to go to Tracy and get acquainted with her and to let her know that I was here for her that I wanted to be able to help her as she was stepped into this, this role and how I could be an encouragement and disciple her so that she could disciple those young women. And that's how we connected. Amazing. So that is an example of sometimes you don't wait for someone to come ask you. You reach out to them. I, I felt very strongly that the Lord wanted me to do that. I love it. And it's been a lifetime of a wonderful relationship. So, Tracy? And yes, when you're in an office with seven male youth pastors and you're the only female, like when she walked in the door, like I clung to her <laughs> and I was like, what are they doing? Help me, please. You know, so anyway, my name is Tracy Steele and uh, like Margie alluded, I've been involved in different um, aspects of youth and women's ministry since 2003, uh, so quite a few years. I am a military spouse. We just recently retired from active duty and so I have moved 10 times in the last 14 years of our marriage across this nation, which has been hard in some respects, but blessings, because I have been a part of many different uh, women's groups and organizations and church, parachurches, and uh, women are still women no matter where you are. We still need Jesus as Lord. Amen. Um, but also, I did not come to know the Lord until later in life. <laughs> which gave me a lot of time to not be holy. And so um, I will probably talk about this while we're still up here, but my mother passed away almost 10 years ago. It would have been October 8th of 2012. And that left a tremendous, huge hole in my life, and it really, really rocked my faith. But guess who? Okay, and there's just one of many who have stepped in the gap of, of her absence in my life, and that is why I am very, very Uh, passionate about discipleship and it's always kind of a foundation. Um, I'm also an author and a speaker so when I speak I'm always talking about it in my book 
Discipleship is a part of it because it really is the avenue um, of how I have really grown closer to love the Lord. And so now I'm also, this is coming out. We have not publicly released this news yet, so you guys are some of the first to hear this. But I'm now the co-founder of a new ministry called My Only Aim, and we will be launching a multifaceted discipleship community for women across Phoenix where we will be doing intentional discipleship and equipping of women. Yes, this is of the Lord. This is of the Lord. Um, because a lot of churches is what I'm finding, the women's ministries are going away um, for whatever reason. I'm now part of CCV as well, and so that has been pressed hard that we need to do something for the women and to launch you back into Palmcroft, back into Desert Springs, back into Scottsdale Bible, wherever it is that your church home is, we want to come around, partner with these churches, and get you women out there so you can be a blessing to your community. So, and I'm a wife and a mom when I'm not doing all of the ministry things. <laughs> But anyway, it's a joy to be here. Thank you. So stop by her table because you can get more information yes. on that. You have the card. And actually, you have in your bag, you have information about that. So check that out. Jen? Yes. Hi, I'm Jennifer Porras. You can call me Jen uh, or Jennifer. I really don't care. Um, I am not from Arizona. Um, I'm originally from California, but I have lived in five states. Fun fact. Kind of moved around. Um, I worked in college athletics. Um, for a couple of years before I was kind of thrown into full-time ministry. Um, I came to know Jesus also later in life. Um, I was 22, so college and my young adult years were very spiritually dark for me, where I don't regret anything that happened during those years, but I learned a lot by my bad decisions I also made, but I learned a lot and um, could see where Jesus was playing a role in those parts of my life. So it kind of started this passion that I have for young adult ministry and college ministry. Um, but right now I am um, the youth admin over at Scottsdale Bible Church. So that's kind of um, what I do. Um, or when I'm not working, I have that passion for young adult ministry and college ministry. So I do that on the side, but full time um, in youth. I was told to ask her what it's like to take a group of fifth and sixth graders to Great Wolf Lodge. <laughs> it's like yeah, trauma. we're all cringing for her, aren't we? Uh-huh. I want to ask you guys about what discipleship looked like for you guys. Um, and I don't know if we said this, but Tracy, you discipled Jennifer. And so it's kind of, if you will, and Jenna Lee talked about this. I love the idea of, you know, you put your family tree on the wall. And it shows who your grandparents are. What if you had like your discipleship tree? And so generally I loved that you actually asked your students to almost track their um, disciple, their lineage, their faith lineage. And if we were able to do that, who would be in there and who would we need to thank? And so this is a faith lineage here, which is amazing. I want to know what discipleship looked like for you guys. For me, for me, I think um, I was raised in the church. I was raised in, uh, in a pastor's home. And my mother was really the one who discipled me. I, I really feel that she died when I was just 22. So then I was kind of on my own. But one of the things she told me before she passed away was that I just want you to be sure and live for Jesus. And I want you to carry on what has been done here. And so I felt that already, that that's what God wanted me to do. And then when I married my husband, who was a pastor, that I said I'd never marry a pastor. Um, <laughs> don't ever say you'll never do something, because it does happen. But it was just the joy of my life then to just walk into that uh, place where I then could give back. But I also feel like my husband was a wonderful discipler. He discipled me as well which I felt I learned so much from him, and I thought that was amazing. So then it was very easy for me then to, um, to give out. Before I came to Scottsdale Bible, my husband and I were at a seminary, and he was in charge of the leadership school there, and I got to create a whole um, program for the spouses of the students at the seminary. And that was amazing because I felt like I'd had a lot of experience now in the ministry, and I wanted to pass that on. So I began to disciple them. And then when I came to be minister to women at Scottsdale Bible, then I was, I was so excited to be able to continue that on. 
And that's how Tracy and I got together. So, And I love that you're only confirming what we've heard this morning, that you, you reach out to women that are in a similar situation than you are. You teach them the things that you learned, sometimes the hard way. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, here's all the mistakes I made. Let me help you not make these mistakes. We just did a Financial Peace University with our college kids at our church. And that's one of the things that I said is, I want to help you not have to spend 10 years paying that's off fine. your debt like we had to do. That's, you know, we spent the first 10 years of our marriage doing that. I want to help you not make the same mistakes. So I love that you stepped into a role where you could kind of put your arm around these ladies and say, here's some of the things you're about to step into. I'm very relational and I love people. I, I think I'm addicted to people, uh, which is a real great addiction, I think. But, uh, but I'm also, I, I really felt like the, that God called me to be in relationship. And that's, to me, how you begin to disciple. You get to know that person. You begin to uh, become acquainted with their, what they are involved in, what they do, what the needs they have. It's all about relationship. I think, I think the whole Christian life is about relationship. But it, it's not just, not just our relationship with Jesus, but to be able to reach out and have relationships with others. And I was going to add, I didn't mention this, but... Um, I was actually an interior designer when God called me into the ministry. And I want that to sit with you because if you know anything about interior design, I knew how to pick paint, okay, and I knew how to put a couch in a room. And when God said, now you're going to go feed my sheep, I was like, do they need yellow paint or what? <laughs> like, are you got the right girl? Because I remember my college years and those weren't really pristine either. So, so that's why Margie was so pivotal for me. Because God had called me into a leadership position at a church where I needed to stand up and tell a 13-year-old girl or show her how to pray, and I had no clue how to do it. All I was is I was faithful, and I showed up to this church, and I was like, I don't know, but nobody told me where my beauty came from at 13 years of age. And had they, I might have lived a lot different these last 10 or 15 years of my life. And so God's call came when I was totally not prepared. Then comes Margie Galloway, and she's like, do you need to, you know, so she started to give me through that discipleship relationship, those leadership skills, um, the, the spiritual discipline, how to pray, how to study my Bible, so I could then go into the youth ministry you see, and then replicate that in the lives of all of these young girls that came uh, through that. And so that's really, uh, and then what was interesting at that time, I really thought, because um, I always do this with the Lord, like my way, and then he's like, no, it's really mine, and so we fight about it, and he wins every time, um, and so it was, I was going to do youth ministry until the day, I was still single girls, so I was never probably going to marry, because where in the world is this guy, I'd already dated all of Phoenix, and you know, whatever, and I'm in my 30s, and I'm still single, so okay, fine, I'll be single forever, and um, you know, and on and on it went, but I just see at that time, I was already watching Margie do women's ministry, Okay, now this was before God would call me into that. So all those things that she didn't have a worksheet that was like, here's how you do women's ministry and here, but I was watching, okay, Ye decades maybe before God called me into that role. Those seeds were being planted. She didn't have a script, okay, she didn't have to have letters after her name. She was faithful to be doing what God was calling her to do, and I was just taking it in. And now years later, I don't just naturally know how to tell you how to plan a women's retreat. I watched her do it. That's what I'm pulling from, okay? Does that make sense? And then little Jen, I don't think I've touched on how she came into the picture. So I'd heard about her, okay? And when I, good I was- Good things, I guess. Uh -huh, good things, good things, good things. So as the associate minister to women at Scottsdale Bible Church from 2020 to 2021, and I kept, and so I, my eyes were already thinking, okay, we gotta keep this ministry going because you know we're not gonna be here forever. I gotta start passing the baton. Look for that Elisha, right? That's gonna be coming next. And I'd heard rumors of this girl that was like on fire in the young adult ministries. And so I think through just a mutual friend of ours, she's like, could you go make copies? But she said that this girl was going to be there. I was like, I'll make those copies because I'm going to go meet this, <laughs> this girl because we need to start raising her up. And I think from the minute we started talking, I could see what she could not see in herself. Because the spirit of God is in this child. It is in it. And I don't know what he's going to still do with her, but I saw the anointing. I saw the humility. I saw the passion for these college girls. And I said, I want to be a part of this and pass on this to her. And so she liked me and thought I was, I guess, cool or something. I don't know. <laughs> and so we just kind of went for that. And I think, you know, Julie said it was very organic. Um, it wasn't scripted. I, again, putting yourself out 
to say as now I am the older woman because I'm halfway to 100, almost, so do your math. Um, I cannot say <laughs> that word. I'm, I'm getting you know, into it. But anyway, and so I just knew, I'm like, okay, here is, is somebody that I really want to start raising up to take on the baton. And so it's been very organic for us. We don't ever have a script. But I do ask those questions that you alluded to. How do you experience God? How, what do you feel? How would you like to experience him more? Do you know how to pray? Um, when you open up the Word of God, those are the questions as a discipler that I learned to ask so I can start to get a read on where she's at. And then those practical things, whether it be scripture study, whether it be fasting, whether it be how do I use my spiritual gift of blah, blah, and blah. Then I'm bringing in scripture. Then I'm bringing in other biblical resources that are based on scripture to come alongside of her. And yeah, that may be more of a formal kind of way that we disciple. But then I think it was Courtney and you that said something about the mentoring piece. So sometimes we're going to fall into more of a mentoring lane together where a problem will come up, she will call, or, and I will be like, okay, you know, let's, let's go back to who God is. Let's go back through some of my testimony like Jenna Lee shared. You know, this was a season of my life. I never thought I was going to be married either, girlfriend, but I had to wait for Chad Steele, you know. And so we go through some of these life things together, and I will cry with her. And sometimes I will let her see my tears. And we might talk about this too, but, you know, this last year has been very, very dark for me spiritually. And so um, I had to, like she said, I had to use some wisdom on what I would share and what I wouldn't. But I wanted to see her, not see me as the polished speaker author, okay, that's going to just throw out Romans 8, 28 at an audience, get on a plane and fly away. I wanted her to see my tears. I wanted her to see me clinging to Jesus probably tighter than I've ever clung because I ain't leaving him. I ain't leaving him. And I will continue on in the ministry and the call that he has given me, even if it comes with great loss. And so on both sides this year, these women have stood in the gaps for me to say, you keep going. And so I wanted her to see that because that's real. That's real. I even got to, um, well, Tracy did get married, but she didn't get married till we said it, we liked him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because um, she, um, she told us that she was in love with this guy, and we said, well, you better be bringing him over because we want to check him out first. He may not be good enough, you know. <laughs> and so we were on a weekend, girls' weekend, and she brought him to the <laughs> hotel where we were. And the whole women's so leadership council at Scottsdale Bible. Anyway, yeah, it was, it was my leadership team at Scottsdale That's Bible. He was in the military. He was so, training for this. But we all said... He's okay. I think it's okay. So she did It's good that to have well. that approval. <laughs> so, you know, that's real. That's real life. You're just living life with this person and really helping them and discipling them and, and seeing real, realness from yourself. The best thing you can do is just be real with the person that you're working with. That's, yeah. that's really important, I think. Yeah. If we're trying to bring perfection to the relationship, it's, it's not a good discipling relationship. Because God's taught me lots of things, and I want to be able to teach that to the next. If perfection person. was necessary, I wouldn't be a discipler. That's yeah, for me sure. Either. Me either. I, so, well, my kids think I'm perfect. That's what I tell them. Discipleship for me. Um, so, I like I said, I came to know Jesus at 22. So, at the church that I was going to at the time. I heard the word discipleship, you know, it was thrown around, it was a church term, you know, and I knew that that was important and that I eventually, someone will come along and I'll just pray about it. But I was, honestly, I was just prideful. I was prideful. I didn't want to step out of my comfort zone to ask somebody to disciple me. Um, so I kind of sat without a mentor or someone discipling me for a while until I moved to Arizona and I started going to Scottsdale Bible Church. I started getting plugged in with young adult ministry. And like Tracy said, it was through a mutual friend. She was bringing copies to her and I was just there. And I, Tracy, from the start, I was like, she's loud like me <laughs> and she likes people like me. I'm like, yeah, I think we're going to, I think this is going to work. And I, I think I just kind of like forced myself. I was like, let's get coffee. Tell me your life story. Um, so right off the bat, we, we clicked. And in that moment, I was like, ah, okay, this is what I prayed for. And I finally, you know, let that guard down and allowed someone older and wiser than me to speak into my life. And it has been such a gift. And it's been really cool. We talk about, we're talking about generational discipleship. 
So I worked at GCU, that's what brought me to the Valley. Yeah, go Lopes. Um, and I worked in college athletics there and I'm, I was an academic coordinator and I worked with track and field. Huge team, a lot of demographics, different types of students. Um, but I found just a love for pouring into those young girls on that, on that specific team. And actually a girl that I disciple is actually here today, Emily, um, and which is so cool. It's four generations My of- My baby. Yes. <laughs> it's just four generations of discipleship. And I, I think Emily, I, I think I put myself on Emily like, hey, let me pour into your life like a little bit more than she wanted to. But I really did feel like the Lord put her in my path, in my life for a reason. And it's been so sweet to take what I've learned from Tracy and how she loves on me and love Emily now. Um, so that's just been really sweet. I want to know from you guys, as you're kind of in this position where you're discipling now, because all three of you are discipling, but what I know is that there is still discipleship coming your direction. Why is that important to, I mean, because we talk about, hey, you need to go and disciple, you need to go and disciple, you need to go and disciple, but also you need to be discipled. Why is it so important that you've got that from both directions? Um, ministry leadership is lonely. Um, I feel like sometimes I'm really honest. Oh gosh. And this is recorded. Awesome. Um, and it's going on my <laughs> podcast. So have fun. It can be lonely sometimes and, and isolation is the enemy's playground. Okay. And we can become so busy pouring into the lives of, of the women around us. It, I'm speaking for myself. Um, and Satan loves that because then I'm unguarded for me. Right. I'm left unprotected because I'm so worried about everybody else's stuff that I'm thinking I'm doing pretty good. And we all know that's not right. I am a sinner saved by the grace of Jesus Christ, and I need him every minute of every day. And so that is why it's very, very important for me to have the inner people, the older people around me to say, I'm seeing pride. I'm seeing this, Tracy. Um, you actually taught that passage wrong. Okay. Um, you know, like I need that accountability and that growth to pour back into me because we cannot do this alone, ladies. And, and I've, I've been to seminary. Like, you know, from the world's perspective, how much does it take, right? We, we, they say you arrive when this happens. Listen to me. We arrive the day we accept Jesus Christ as Lord. Okay? That is arrival. Anything else that God blesses us with, whether it is children, whether it is marriage, whether it is with a, whatever we get to lead worship, those are extra. But what we have been given in Christ is very holy, and the enemy hates it. And so he will tell you, you don't need them. You don't need anybody to pour into you because you are the teacher. No, no, and no. Okay, we will never arrive in knowledge. We will never arrive in holiness, the sight of heaven, because we are in the world. We have flesh, and we have the enemy that is coming against us. And this is extremely important to have those people that you can trust, that know God's word. They're not perfect, but gosh darn it, they are, they are following hard after Jesus because they are the, the ones, I think, his physical hands and feet to keep you going. So. I think for me, um, I'm... I'm at a point now, I just lost my husband. He passed away a few months ago. And so I found myself in a whole different place. I'd always been the one who gave out, discipled, cared for others. And I was really in a hurting situation. But I've had the most wonderful experience with now women taking care of me and coming to me and encouraging me when I needed that and sharing with me and helping me to see that God's word is true, even through the toughest times in your life. And uh, that has been such a blessing to me as well. So I feel like even in my place where I was always giving out, I've been receiving now, and that has been such a great thing. And I did have to even ask God, what's my purpose? And he spoke to me so clearly, and he says, you haven't lost your purpose. Your purpose has always been to glorify me, and it still is. But now I'm going to give you direction. And he has given me direction through others as well, which has just been a blessing to me. So it does come back. Right, right. And again, and I'm watching. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and I've seen a woman who has had her heart ripped out, and she just continues to go in the tears. Oh. I'm so proud of you, and I'm, and I'm watching the fruit of her ministry continue through Lyft, um, through the pages of my book. Your voice is in there. 
you know, and she hasn't stopped, even in the heartache of this tremendous loss. Never once have I heard her say, I'm done with you, God. How could you? It's how can I continue to love? And I know that makes Dale happy. And it has, again, continued to minister to me because I'm watching. So God is definitely not done with Margie Galloway by any means. He'd have a fit. Dale would have a fit if he knew. <laughs> I wasn't moving ahead. You know what I mean? Send, he'd send an angel down with yeah, a message. <laughs> Well, I have a few questions um, that were sent my direction for you guys. Um, so this first one is about millennials. Back off the millennials. Just kidding. Um, I am one. Jen, you're one. I am one. Want to be Gen Z, though? I want to be Gen Z, but I am a millennial <laughs> by my birth year. <laughs> All right. So a recent study stated that millennials want an easy life. As disciplers, how can we move from easy to challenging them to grow a deeper walk with Jesus? And I know specifically um, this question was thrown out because sometimes when you get deeper, people are like, I'm out. I mentioned that earlier that, you know, are we in this for friendship or are we in this to actually be disciples of Christ? So what can we do to move from easy to challenging? I think... Um as the millennial that wants an easy life. Um, I think just to piggyback off the last conversation, like watching Tracy go through a hard season allowed me, or it made me realize that walking with Jesus, it's so sweet and it's so good, but there's always going to be like those hard moments that you are going to have to rely on him and the people that love him and um, rely on them to point you back to Jesus. So I think what's sweet with Tracy and I, she is not afraid to ask me the hard questions that make me really uncomfortable. And I'll like, sometimes after our conversations, like I'll sit back and just really reflect and pray about those questions because sometimes she'll stump me and I'm like, man, yeah, okay. I need to pray about that some more. Um, but all that to say is just Tracy will always challenge me because I feel like just through how she has lived her life, I've seen like, okay, like look at this perseverance, look at this uh, constant dedication and run towards Jesus. Like I know that it's not always going to be easy and she'll always ask me those hard questions to further challenge me and strengthen me because she knows that those moments are going to refine me. Um, a lot of the millennials that I, I mentor, what I love about this generation, I don't know why the world keeps putting them down. Like, I love, tw like, 20s, I'm like, come on, babies. You know, because what I love about their, a lot of the ones that I've been in contact with, I've seen this desire within them to make the world around them a better place. Like, they, they've got to have, like, a, a kind of a bigger vision for their life than maybe my generation um, might have really, we don't really know what our generation is. I don't even know what we're called, but we're this weird in-between kind of generation. Um, and so what I try to do with my girls is, is exactly what she said, is there's this tendency, I think, with the soul care and all of this hoo-ha going on, that we can't ever feel pain, okay? Because pain and suffering is a bad thing, and let's numb it, and, and Romans 8, 28 it, and I don't believe the, the way of our Lord was suffering, okay, to the cross. Pick up your cross and follow me. And so what I try to do with my girls is to say, listen, um, I'm not going to isolate you from the pain. The pain that you're feeling is actually going to help you carry out something bigger for the world, right? And so to be real about that, um, but then again, to actually show them from scripture again, what our Lord's life was like. There wasn't anything easy about the life of Jesus. Why then do we think that the life that is easy, the life that is Instagrammed and Photoshop is the way to godliness. It is not. You know, it's the giving up of our life to follow Jesus. That is the road that we are called to walk because the world needs to see that in the cancer, in the death, in the singleness that goes on and on and on. That is your ministry. That is your platform. And so we need to be the older women that are steady, to say, don't you dare give up on Jesus. This is the holy way. There is blessing in these tears, so keep going. And so I think just being real with them about that, um, really it's the spirit that is going to do a lot of that. Um, so I hope we get to say this, so I'll say it right now, that um, again, the times I have felt most disqualified to be a disciple is when I've made it about me. Okay, um, We are the, you know, the mouthpieces, but it really at the end of the day, 
is the Holy Spirit's job to work through us, all right, and determine what is going to happen in this kind of a relationship, all right? Praise God it doesn't depend on us because, again, like I said, we are, we're just the sheep. And it really is, I mean, we're trying to be as surrendered and as obedient to hear him and to speak what we believe he is saying. Um, but at the end of the day, to move that person, we need to be on our knees praying for those millennials, okay, to want that desire. But do they see us going, yes, this is what has made a difference in my life. So, anyway. I, I think, too, um, the family is pretty fragmented in, in these years now. And a lot of uh, young women don't have moms that even uh, would be a model for them. Yeah. And so I think God has really showed me how I can be that stability. And I think that young people need stability because they haven't had a lot of it. And if I can be real and share with them my life and how God has worked in my life through the years, I think that does give them a sense. Because they're going to get to be my age someday. You know, I mean, it's, they think they're just in this easy life right now. But they're going to have to grow up. Yeah. And so that's, and, but I think that, that we as older women too can bring a stability that maybe they don't have, which I think is really important. I want to go even younger, and I want to talk about Gen Z and um, the fact that one of the things that we know or that we're seeing about Gen Z that's different than any of the other generations is that um, I think millennials feel like we have this higher purpose. We want to have this bigger purpose, but um, we seek the approval and the help maybe sometimes of people around us. Um, especially those of us that grew up in the church uh, were like, well, I'm going to go and ask my leaders and see what they think about it. Or, um, you know, I'm going to ask my friends and if they don't think that I should do it, then maybe I won't. And we're seeing Gen Z is like, no, I've got this idea. I've got this passion. Let's go. Right. But th it, what that results in is sometimes that means that it looks different than the way churches looked. And it, it, it's not I mean, it doesn't include a program because the program, it doesn't fit within a nice, tidy program. So how do we help? I mean, I think that is amazing that Gen Z has this passion. How can we help these, um, these desires, these, um, the, the, these things that drive Gen Z, how can we help them as we mentor them? I think working with college students, I've learned a lot about how to how to, when they tell me about those passions and those dreams, how to respond. Um, actually, Emily and I were just having this conversation and I think I always point back to rest and like waiting and being still in the Lord um, and reminding them that it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen in the next hour. So like take it day by day and really focus in on that prayer of like, okay, Lord, like steady my heart tell me what to do next instead of like having this idea of having to go, go, go. Um, Cause I don't think Gen Z rests at all. I don't think millennials rest. Well, millennials honestly. don't rest and we certainly yeah. didn't teach Gen Z to rest. No, so I oh no, it. they're, they, and, but it's so awesome. Like I am so, I, I feel like I am, I've learned so much from the college girls that I do mentor and disciple, but I also see like, hey, you need to slow down. Like, what are the things in your life that aren't bringing glory to God or aren't filling you to help fill others? Um, and I just, yeah, I just challenge them to be still with the Lord and rest before, you know, tackling all those amazing things that they want to accomplish. It's out of that instant society that we have created that's making these kids like that because they think everything should happen right away because, you know, they can put it in the microwave and it's done in a second, you know. I mean, really, I'm serious. I think that's really a lot of it. But I think the Bible, it hasn't changed. All these years we've gone through all these generations and the Bible is still the same. And so we need to keep them in the Word. That's really important. And have them um, realize that just because life seems really fast right now, that doesn't mean that they have to, to be like that all the time. You know, so. I want to know from you guys, what are some of the struggles that you've experienced in your time in discipleship, either personally or maybe even like, well, she said this to me and then we didn't talk for two weeks. And <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But what are some of the struggles that you guys have, have worked through or gone through at, in your time together? 
Well, I've had women that have walked away from a relationship with me because they didn't want to hear what they didn't want to hear some of the hard questions. What do you do? Because part of the reason why I think some people don't step out is because they're like, they don't want to hear anything from me. I, I, I don't want to be rejected because rejection is too hard. And then you finally step out and then the woman walks away. What do you do with I'm, that? I'm a pleaser, so it's pretty hard on me. I'll tell you <laughs> me that. too! For the years, it's been hard on me. But I do think that God placed me in her life for such a time as this. And I have to let it go and believe that God's going to use somebody else that will come alongside her. But I don't feel regretful of what I have invested in that relationship. And I've had that happen to me in, through my years several times. And it's hurt. it hurts. It does hurt. But that, that doesn't keep me from stepping out and helping somebody else. I think oftentimes it's where they are at that time. And they're not open to hear what they need to hear. And um, that's part of, I think that's just part of being, and, and, the, and if, if I'm in the word and I'm staying close to the Lord and I'm praying and say, God, is this what you wanted for, me, for this young woman or this older woman? Um, and it, it can happen. I've, I've mentored older women that didn't want to hear what, what the Lord wanted them to hear, you know. So it can happen either way. Well, yeah, lots of rejection. Extroverts, we get rejected all the time, <laughs> you know, because we just love everyone. Um, but I will say this, I, and I will usually say this the first time I'm meeting with someone, is that um, I'm really leaving it up to them to determine the longevity of it. Now, if, if it's kind of more in a leadership, like with a church, and I know, okay, we're going to do like a three-week discipleship thing, that's already been defined. But in a lot of these relationships, I will always tell her, whenever the Spirit moves you on, obey okay what that does for me as a disciple or is it it leaves me like this the entire time and i know if i get one conversation with her and the lord is saying move on from tracy Steele," great that was that was it i get one shot and so you know i'm trying in that five minute conversation or that hour to bring his word in again because his word is always going to carry and it should because it's you know an errant and mine is very errant um <laughs> you know that is what i should be pointing her to and so when i'm training women in discipleship i always tell them to think of the analogy and this is not a perfect one of course but it's kind of how i try to do discipleship is think of like a road sign when you're on a trip okay and what do you do with a road sign when you're in the car driving Okay, you're just glancing at that road sign, right, to say, okay, how far do I have left to my destination? Do I need to slow down? Do I need to speed up? Is there a hazard somewhere? But your destination is not that sign. If you start, as you're driving, and you're focused on that sign, where, where's the car going to go? It's going to go off the side of the road, right? But you still trust that that sign is there for a reason. Okay, that is my role in Jen's life, okay? The destination is Christ himself, not the discipler. All right? So she's just to glance at Tracy to know, am I supposed to speak? Me. I'm speaking in third person. I don't even know what person I'm speaking in right now. Sorry. <laughs> I haven't had my coffee. But anyway, um, and so, you know, so she's just glancing at me. And that allows, when it is time for her, because there will come a time where God will move her on. That's just the beauty of being in a body of awesome women just like this, right? We can share one another. Amen? And so there will be a time this will come to an end. But I'm not there. I am not her Jesus. Margie has never said, I'm your Jesus. Margie has said, Tracy, look back to Jesus. All right? And so when we operate in that mode, it is much easier when the rejection comes, because it will, and I've had it, to say, okay, Lord, you know, I, I, was, I tried to be faithful. I'm going to entrust you now to take her further with someone else. And, and he will comfort you because I've cried. I, I love people. I don't want them to go. But that is just part of the nature so that I think that's that safeguard of us trying not to become Jesus in each other's lives. Sometimes I've said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're getting real honest now. <laughs> I think, I, I totally understand. I also think it's really important that what you said, yeah. when, when you're glancing, that means you're walking like side by side with the person. You're not like looking, saying, I'm going to become that person. Because then, since we are human, if, that, if you're trying to become like that person, then they fall. Now, we if your faith is attached to that person, what do you do then? So, well, ladies, I want to say thank you for being here. I'm going to ask you my final question, and you have 30 seconds to answer it since there's three of us. All right? Uh, at the end of every podcast, we ask, 
uh, because we're not meant to live life alone, who has helped you along in your journey? Oh, I've had so many people help me along in my journey. Um, I just am so grateful. I w I've been thinking about this since my husband passed away. I invested my life in a lot of people, and now I'm receiving that back. So I have a village, I feel, at this point, that are caring about me. And that, that blesses me. And people that my husband and I had in our church, churches years ago, are still my friends today. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so wonderful. I'm so grateful. I love that. Thank you, Tracy. Oh, my sweet mama, who's in heaven. So um, she died well. She had breast cancer for about 11 years, um, suffered immensely. But again, she just loved Jesus, and everybody knew it. And so she loved smiley faces. And at her wedding, we all wore yellow dresses, and there were just smiley faces all over um, that because that was who she was. And so she has been that rock. And then, like I said, God has filled, I mean, not replaced, but has definitely uh, filled it with such amazing women since then. Is that why you have a smiley face? I have smiley Tag. faces everywhere. Social media, there, but my book, there's smiley faces everywhere. So. <laughs> I love it. Jen? Yeah, so I think just the community that the Lord has placed in my life um, every step of the way. Um, I had a really solid community when I was living in Dallas who, that was the first time accountability was introduced into my life. So those hard questions that made me feel really uncomfortable about just the sin pa patterns and temptations and I was like whoa that's really that's you're digging deep um, but those were the conversations that I remember and I feel like those helped build me um, to be a stronger believer in Jesus and rely on him um, so yeah my community that I've been that has been placed in my life a couple of my community girls from my church here are here supporting so I mean all of anyone that has encouraged me and continued to build me up um, because I didn't grow up with the idea of biblical community in my house. Um, so it was a very new thing to me when I did come to know Jesus um, later in life.